everybody. Welcome to Comics from the Future, TGIF. Thank you so much for joining us today as we go over some of the most awesome upcoming comics covers, new series from DC Marvel, and a ton of other independent creators as well. If you don't know, my name is Megan. I'm Andy. And I'm Jason. We're with Infinity Flux Comics in the lovely Chattanooga, <laughs> Tennessee. We love it when Jason I know. says lovely. I've gotten requests on that. <laughs> But yeah, guys, thank you so much for watching, whether you're watching us live stream or on YouTube. We are almost at 900 YouTube subscribers, which means we're going to get to 1,000 hopefully soon. So thank you very much. Uh, we've been getting a lot of great comments lately. We really appreciate all your feedback in every which way. So I guess let's get into it. And I'm talking first <laughs> with Static. It is finally here. This is Static Season 1. This is going to be a six-part series from Milestone and DC. Milestone is returning here, and they are revamping their most famous, probably, character. Not, not, not even probably, for sure. Their most famous character with Static. So if you don't know, Static was definitely created to feel a little bit like Spider-Man. Mm -hmm. You know, a teen a self-described nerdy teen getting into adventures. Um, of course, he gets powers. Uh, I wonder if it has to do with something with static electricity. The answer is yes. Um, I wasn't using dryer sheets in the dryer. <laughs> you, know, you get those clothes out, they're all crackling. You dryer sheets, kids. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, so he is a nerdy teenager um, in high school and gains powers, uses them to protect the innocents, but in this world... He also, just like every hero, has to have villains. His bullies also have superpowers, so how much does that suck? <laughs> um, it just evens oh, the playing man. field. You get powers, they get powers, and it's like not, nobody has powers. <laughs> so, um, this is going to take place, um, it definitely feels like modern times. We're thrust into the middle of a protest, and you know some stuff is going to go wrong there. So, I think a lot of people are very excited for this. I am too. If you missed out on the milestone that came before, here's your chance to get fresh, it's revamped characters, all black creators, even on the covers. So, speaking of covers, this is our A cover from Carrie Randolph, and our B cover with Sean Martin Bro, and this is called the Old School cover. It's got that old school costume mm -hmm. with the baseball cap and stuff, and I like how the, the new school version is... They, they definitely are choosing to go the direction of uh, Static Shock, the animated series, because I think that's how most people now know the character of Static is from the old animated cartoon. For right. sure. Yeah, so this is going to be an exciting new series. Um, so like I said, it's a six-parter. So sign, go ahead and sign up for the whole thing or just check out the number one. And this is the C cover by oh, yeah. Nicholas Draper Oops. Ivy. <laughs> Thank you. That's okay. Yeah, we're, we're all we're co-hosts. <laughs> Next up is Wonder Woman Black and Gold. So, uh, I mean, in the vein, it feels like every company is doing now. We have uh, Carnage, Red, White, and Blood. We have Batman, Black and White. We ha I, Batman didn't even get a color. They didn't even call it, like, Black and Gray. It's like, no, you only get Black and White. Everybody else gets a highlight. But this is Wonder Woman Black and Gold. So, much in the same way the other ones are, this will be an anthology series. This one is uh, six issues long. The first issue is 40 pages long, mm -hmm. and it will have some really cool stories. Uh, the first one is by John Arcudi and Ryan Sook, and if you're not, if you don't know Ryan Sook's art, he's awesome. He was just most recently on uh, Bendis' Legion of Superheroes. And each of these stories, of course, will be kind of highlighting kind of what makes Wonder Woman great, um, focusing on stuff like there's going to be a story about her lasso, a story back from the Golden Age, a story about Etta Candy, her friend, uh, about her villains. So a lot of different creators, stuff like Becky Cloonan, Amy Reader, uh, A.J. Mendez with Ming Doyle, um, just a whole bunch of uh, really top tier creators doing these fun stories. So I like that they're doing this, um, these little stories that aren't tied in with the main continuity. I, I like that you don't even necessarily have to get all of them. You can kind of check the creators or check the stories, be like, oh, that one sounds good to me, which is rare these days that you're yeah. not, not knee deep in an event or something. So uh, we have our A cover right here. Then we have 
the Middleton variant, which is her yeah. hair looks lovely. Yeah, <laughs> very fluffy. But yeah, nice. it does. <laughs> and then we have the Yannick Paquette variant. It's got some scary confidence going on there. Yeah, I really like that one. the yeah. the The gold is an interesting choice for the highlight color. So you're gonna see a lot of a lot of lasso in these. Yeah, it's the right choice for Wonder Woman. Mm -hmm. So. Okay, from Marvel, I'm here to tell you about Captain America Annual Number 1. So whether you've been getting Captain America or not, you might be interested in this because this is part of a little sort of background event that mm -hmm. Marvel is running called Infinite Destinies. It started. It's going to start in uh, Iron Man mm -hmm. Annual Number 1 that we've talked about previously. So it's going to be a series of eight annuals that are going to return the Infinity Stones back sort of into the Marvel Universe. Whenever they come around, big things tend to happen. Mm -hmm. what the, what's happened with them lately is, is they've fused with different people. Mm -hmm. So in this one, it promises that Captain America has to stop this villain named Overtime that the Time Gem has fused with. And apparently he's on death row. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and I don't think I'd be in the old record company. <laughs> I, I think they're going to kill him. Time Gem fuses with him. So he's probably not too happy about that. And Cap has to try to stop him. It has a backup story called Super Spy versus Super Spy, um, which, you know, right away I think is Mad Magazine involved yeah. in this, but no. It is um, Nick Fury is calling himself now Agent of Nothing. Now, Nick Fury, he, for a while, was the Watcher, but that's been, yeah. they, the Watcher got, sort of left him. Mm -hmm. Watu's back doing his own thing. So now Nick Fury is no longer Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. He's been Agent of several other things. Now he's calling himself Agent of Nothing. He's going up against Phil Coulson, his old yeah. friend and agent, who is calling himself the Agent of Mephisto. Ooh. I don't know why exactly. I think that's part of the story here. Um but Phil Coulson, of course, died a while back. This is the first time that him and Nick Fury are going to be in a book together since that. So I'm pretty interested in the B story. So on the one hand, Infinity Stone's returning. The other hand, you got this spy versus spy thing. So I think this is something not to sleep on as far as it's not just a regular Captain America annual. It is a little background event that I think you're going to hear more and more about. Um, they're also promising some first appearances in some of these of new characters who may end up with the stones. Because they say each issue, it could be Cap gets the stone, it could be Overtime is able to keep it, someone else. So that's supposed to be some of the mystery too. So there we have the A cover. Here is the Cherist variant. And here is, of course, Rob Liefeld. He's doing all his Deadpool 30th anniversary variants. That Captain America has to be 10 foot tall. Or that Deadpool. He's just sucking in his air. <laughs> yeah. He's just shrinking in. <laughs> and then here is the Ron Lim variant. Which, I hope they let Ron Lim do one on each. I thought you were know, about to say, I hope they phones, give Ron Lim a break. Stones. Because <laughs> they're overworking no, him. More, more Ron Lim. More Ron Lim. Yeah, keep him going. Okay, guys, who is excited for this? It is the next installment in Demon Days by Peach Momoko. So, if you didn't know, Demon Days, I think it was originally solicited to be a five-part miniseries, but it's actually going to be a series of, of one-shots. So, this is book two, but I think they're actually titling it number one. So, don't be confused. This isn't a side one-shot. This is number two to the Demon Days story. So, this is about Mariko and if you don't know she is actually the daughter of a Japanese crime lord and one-time lover of Wolverine. They had a really tragic love story so I think this perfectly fits Peach Momoko's reimagined Marvel style and that's what Demon Days is if you didn't check out number one. It is just a different uh, sort of manga or Japanese style take on the Marvel characters and it's really beautiful, it's really unique. The first one featured a lot of Venom and Hulk and Psylocke because you had really never seen the characters and it was really fun to just sort of see such a fresh perspective. Um, so that's what we're going to get with this one too. It looks like, as you can see on the cover, it's kind of fun to try to piece out who mm -hmm. these are about. So I see Black Widow, I think, on there and like we said, Mariko. So. That's the next installment. If you're not signed up for Demon Days on your pull list, there was a pretty big gap between yeah. number one and this, this one. This is quarterly? It's a quarterly series, right. which Marvel does not do a lot of, <laughs> so don't be surprised when this hits the shelves. And of course, we have a lot of covers for this, so this is the A cover by Momoko herself. Then we have the Azrar variant, 
and then the Bartel variant. Very nice usage of uh, sort of darkness into color. Mm -hmm. I think that's also timely with the Black Widow movie that we have yeah. uh, Black Widow reimagined right. here. This is the Girihiru variant, uh, very much looking like my neighbor Totoro. <laughs> You're right, yeah. Uh, next is J. Scott Campbell cover. Lots of different options for you to choose from here. Next we have the Sakai. Yeah, that's Stan Sakai of uh, Usagi Ojimbo fame, cool. which is really cool. They pulled very in a lot of talent for these covers. Mm -hmm. And then lastly, the Varegi cover. Definitely a very different looking cover for Varegi. So pick your favorite one, pick them all, and I'm, I'm ready for this next Demon Days. Who is ready? for the biggest comic ever made, the planet-sized X-Men. This is, uh, we had our giant size, giant wasn't big enough, <laughs> now we have planet-sized X-Men number one. Uh, which I think, I've actually read plenty of comics that are longer than this one, but it must be uh, talking about how planet-sized the things in it that are gonna happen. Right. <laughs> this isn't going to be like a 900 page Marvel's comic. claiming a lot with this one. Marvel is claiming a lot. So we have the Hellfire Gala going on. Um, by the point this comes out, we'll have quite a few issues of it um, in its re respective series, whether it be X-Men or Marauders or whatever. But this one, I feel like is the 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 crux of the story. It so, seems like what it's all sort of leading yeah, to. Yeah, we know... Uh, from solicitations, after this, we're getting the trial of Magneto. Mm -hmm. The trial of Magneto is going to happen because there is going to be a murder at the gala. Apparently, Magneto murders somebody. And I have a feeling that's going to happen in this issue. Mm. It seems like the most logical that they would do the one that you didn't have to be reading all of the other ongoing things. I, I have a feeling this will tie into that a lot. Makes sense. So, this is big for more reasons than just that this will be uh kind of the introduction also of our new x-men of krakoa team that's going to be cyclops marvel girl sunfire rogue x-23 wolverine sink and Plor Plor polaris <laughs> polaris <laughs> where i come from we call her polaris a polaris a little, yeah easier to yeah to so um this is going to be really cool it is just a one shot by uh, Jerry Duggan and Pepe Loraz, who are going to be the team that will spin out of this into the new X-Men number one. So I also feel like this is a, a starting point for that new run of X-Men we're about to get. So I think this is going to be really big. There's some preview pages for this that look super interesting. Did we have those preview pages? Yes, we do. Okay, so... Uh, Let's move on to... The variant covers. Yeah, let's do the yeah. variant covers first. So, of course, we have the Dodderman Connecting variant with uh, Marvel Girl or Jean Grey in her gala attire. We have the Dodson variant. We have the LaRaz variant. I like this one a lot. That's really cool. Rose glasses there. Yeah. We have the Limb... 90s variant there he is and then i think we have the preview screens yeah from the so there's material. some really interesting stuff in the previews um of course the one of the reasons i was thinking this is going to be heavily magneto is because we see we see some of these pages featuring magneto pretty heavily and it's amazing Pepe Laraz art. Yep, and we're allowed to show these preview pages. Yeah. They have not added the dialogue, and that way mm -hmm. the, all the secrets can't be known. Yeah, you can try to suss out what maybe is going on. But yeah. you see uh, Emma Frost, some really cool stuff. Which makes sense, because, I mean, she held the gala. She yeah, she's the, kind of the, the party planning. The ringleader of it. <laughs> Later. Yeah. And uh, Magneto does not look real pleased right now no they they have they on. have an interesting rivalry yeah this one i think is super interesting so in this oh. one we see cyclops coming out and meeting with captain america which for me is very reminiscent of issue one of uh avengers versus x-men these two have a history where at one point captain america stepped on to their previous island which was uh genosha right asking for something and Cyclops 
said no, and then blasted Captain America out into the middle of the ocean. And so I feel like this is a little reminiscent of that meeting. Hopefully the dialogue will get a little hint to that very pivotal event in their relationship. Some more really interesting stuff. Some very odd characters in it. Yep. So those are the preview pages that have been released so far. Yep. Just give you an idea of the art and sort of the feel of the book. Mm -hmm. Hard to gauge a lot from that. Yeah, they, they picked out these pages for a reason. It's there to entice you, but not give away too much. You don't see, like, somebody's body laying on a gurney <laughs> and they pulled back yeah. the thing and you see their face and you know who And they're it like, is. you'll never guess who it is. And they put out preview pages with yeah. a big splash page. Okay, well, so up next from Boombox is a book called Save Yourself. So Boombox is Boom's, the, the titles they do with Boombox tend to be sort of all ages. They're mm -hmm. not necessarily for kids. It's just sort of younger people can read them and they don't have to worry about uh, F-bombs <laughs> or, you know, people going into XXX shops or something like that. It's, it's just more for everybody. So the story in this one is about there are these three magical alien girls who years ago appeared at our planet to warn us and to help us fight off a surprise invasion of a bunch of alien monsters. Mm -hmm. So, of course, since then, they've, they've stuck around and they're just these beloved heroes. Mm -hmm. Everybody likes them. Well, what happens when this one girl who really likes them a lot, I think they particularly like saved their brother or something like that, she witnesses something that shakes her faith in them, that, that calls it all in the question if they really are the saviors that they say they are or not. Um, so that's the this, this sort of hook premise from what I understand. And I mean, the title, Save Yourself, that's kind mm -hmm. of interesting. You know, how can they be heroes when the, literally the title is saying <laughs> you're going to need more than just whatever these heroes are? Um, it is described as a cross between, or for people who like, Sailor Moon and Wind. Yeah, you know, the James Tynion book. So, yeah, I think that's, it doesn't sound like there's a comic like that going on right now. Yeah, the, the, the magical girl genre is a very big genre in like manga with books like Sailor Moon and everything. Okay. Uh, so it's interesting that we're kind of having this, uh, this new series with some of those elements, which I think a lot of uh, manga fans will be really excited about that. Right, breaching their way into American comics. Mm -hmm. And I don't think, okay, so this is a four-part series, but as with all Boom things, we always tell you that often their stuff, if it does well enough, becomes ongoing, mm -hmm. and they don't renumber it, which I think, I think that's awesome. It's yeah. really fun, in my opinion. So uh, let's see. There's only one B cover for this. This is the Gonzaga cover. I wonder if each issue is going to like focus on one of the different girls. That, that seems likely. That's what I would say. So. All right, next up we have Jupiter's Legacy Requiem. Number one, it's going to start off a 12-part maxi series, and this is uh, Mark Millar's return and sequel to, a sequel and conclusion to the Netflix show. So this is, if you're not, if you're needing more after you watch and binge watch the show, you can check this out. So this is definitely his conclusion to it. So the intergenerational, multi-generational, huge superhero tale uh, about trying to create a perfect society and things do not go well long. They think they have everything settled, but it does not last in this series. So there are so many variant covers to this. <laughs> uh, this yep. is the A cover. And next up we have the Quietly cover. And Who was the original artist on the right. on the first Jupiter's Legacy and, series? And the Definitely. second one too. Oh, Jupiter's was it? Jupiter's Legacy okay. one and two. Yep. And there's also like two different versions. <laughs> so they have the B cover, which was what you just saw, and the C cover here, which is the black and white version. Uh, next up, we have the Jock variant. Very interesting. Yeah. Then Netflix season one variant. <laughs> it's just a poster. <laughs> It looks nice, though. Yeah, it does. I have to say. I haven't watched the Netflix show yet. I don't know if any of us actually have. So please, if you have, let us know in the comments. How, how is it? I, it's got, I, I know it got a lot of mixed reviews, but I think people have been warming up to it mm -hmm. as more they've watched more episodes. Okay. Next we have the Yildrim variant. And then everybody's favorite, Blank. <laughs> Next up is a series I'm going to butcher every name associated with it, but uh, this is Seven Swords from Aftershock Comics. 
This is from the screenwriter of Snow White and the Huntsman, Evan Doherty. Interesting. And the artist, Ricardo Latina. And what's interesting about this, it's very much inspired by things like Errol Flynn and League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. And I can definitely see the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen with the the storyline because it's about the uh, the fourth musketeer. Apparently in this, he's the, the last musketeer, or D'Artagnan. And he is putting together a team of other characters to fight his greatest nemesis who from uh, Three Musketeers, who's now dabbling in, like, sorcery. And the team he puts together is where I'll, I will butcher the names, but it's, like, Don Juan, Captain Blood, uh, Serrano de Bergenac. <laughs> but these very, like, classical uh, literary characters. and, and Cyrano de Bergerac. Serrano Pepper. <laughs> yeah, I just think of Serrano. <laughs> yeah. So there you go, but uh, this does sound really interesting because it, it's pulling like all, it's like a, a team up of very classical characters. Oh. That's cool. That is very interesting. And there's I, just the one cover. And I'm wondering who the one, it looks sort of like a nun with a sword is on it. Yeah, I, I couldn't find any like female names in the uh, in the solicit. Hmm. So. I, see, I know to pronounce Cyrano, not just from, you know, the story. But also, there's a great Cyrano de Bergerac movie. Like, I recommend everyone watch it. It's so good. Um, anyhow. <laughs> Serrano. <laughs> Serrano de Pepperac. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, uh, Heroes Reborn. This is the, the latest one shot that they are soliciting. It is called Heroes Reborn Weapon X and Final Flight. So, in it, as you can see, Wolverine, he's still in Canada. Um, you know, this is the alternate Marvel history. What if there never was an Avengers? It sets all this stuff in motion, inc including the Squadron Supreme taking their place. And they are not nearly as nice. So apparently Canada has been decimated by probably a war with the Squadron Supreme. Uh, not much is left. And so Weapon X and his team, um, Final Flight, I guess the remaining members of Alpha Flight, <laughs> are trying to protect Canada from the squadron still. There, so the squadron's kind of the bad guys in this. And I think that's where this has all been going to. You get yeah. all the one shots about the squad members and they're all like, I'm a hero, but you watch them and it's like, I don't know, you're kind of jerks. <laughs> and in this it's sort of like, yeah, I mean, they're, they're still trying to mess with Canada after they already decimated it. These one shots are all 40 pages and a few of them I got to read previews of just last week. They are really good, I have to say. I've enjoyed everything Heroes Were Born, the one-shots particularly, I think if they were just the regular 24-page comics, they wouldn't be nearly as good. But with 40 pages, they really pack in a story where you can learn about these characters, learn what's going on in their world, and get a full story in. So I'm looking forward to this. Definitely tell your story that you want this, if this is one that you want. And the reason is, as these events head towards the end, stores end up ordering less because that's typically how it goes. Occasionally, events heat up later, and I think that's what Heroes Reborn has been doing. Mm -hmm. We've seen that at our store. Yeah. As people have been reading it, good word of mouth has spread. So um, if you don't order from us, I would definitely tell your store to make sure you get your copy of this. And let's see. I believe there is, yeah, there's one B cover to this. This is the Yarden variant cover for this. So some of the classic members are on the team. Right. Maybe some new ones, I think I saw Sasquatch. Yep. Um, I think... North Star was in there. Yeah, I see North Star there. No There's, puck. Mm, right. So, yeah, typically with these books, you find out not everybody has lived to this point. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, they're they're severe. I mean, almost everyone I read, they're they get in fights and. Have we seen Wolverine die. in any of the no. Heroes Reborn stuff yet? Nope. This, this is where he's at. That's he's cool. Protecting his homeland. Cool. So. All right, guys. So we are in the part of our show where we're showing you some number twos, other stuff, and variant covers that we don't want you to miss out on. And this one is really cool. This is Mighty Valkyries, number three of the five-part series, the video game screen. This is the villains variant, um, the Gonzalez Spider-Man villains variant. So character select, cool video game screen. And then we have the Jimenez Pride Month variant. I'm a sucker for any time they do those video game ones with, yeah, with no. character selection. Yeah. It's just, I, I don't know, there's something that, that sparks something in me that's like, oh, I want to play that. Yeah. <laughs>
Next up is Miles Morales Spider-Man number 27. This is uh, still during the um, clone saga of Miles Morales. This issue does say it's going to uh, reveal the secret origin of the clones and the truth is horrifying. So we'll see what kind of horrifying truth can come about that. And it says, and of course, it's going to shake Miles Morales forever in the comic book community, just like just like most issues do. <laughs> uh, but this has been really cool so far. And this is the Besh variant, who is one of the the new names that we're seeing yeah. come up more and more. For as, good reason. As I mean, one of the hot yeah. artists. Look at that cover. Like, there's so much going on, yet I want to keep looking at it. Yeah, so I think we're seeing the early days of Besh's art um, kind of like the early days of Peach Momoko where it's mm -hmm. like, hey, you should probably pick up some of these early ones because these are going to be the ones that people are going to go back and hunt for. Mm -hmm. She's got a real underground sort of style to mm -hmm. her. Very thick lines, mm -hmm. um, some cell shadedness to the color that's really cool. Yeah, and also this is most everybody's first chance to get a Besh cover for cover price. Yes. She's up until this point, mainly done incentives that have gone like up in value quite mm -hmm. a bit. So, I mean, this is definitely a good one not to sleep on. So next up, this is Star Wars number 14, which is part of the War of the Bounty Hunters. We just want to make sure everybody knows, like we're going to tell you every part of this <laughs> that you can get because people have been just rushing our store. Even people that don't normally read comics have heard about this mm -hmm. because it has to do with adding sort of canon to the movie era mm -hmm. stuff. Um, so in this, they say that a general, a Jedi, and a Wookiee learn the location of where Han Solo is. He's still in Carbonite, and they try to do a rescue mission. So, sounds cool. It has some variant covers. This is the Lucasfilm 50th anniversary variant. This is the John Tyler Christopher action figure variant. And lastly, we have the Burn variant let's see yep. all right next up is a new one from scout it didn't say if this was ongoing or a mini series but it seems to be that most scout stuff is mini series mm -hmm. so this is claire and the dragons it is about a young girl who befriends a shut-in homeless guy who seems like he is seeing and hearing things about dragons but it turns out that claire can also see and hear them, and the two of them have to obviously form a very unlikely friendship and defeat these dragons. So, looks to be all ages, but I actually didn't find any info on that either. Um, but from the solicitation, it definitely sounded like it was no F on bombs and triple uh, X rings. <laughs> no, no, good. Okay. <laughs> we'll save that for what he's talking about for, next. For the next one. <laughs> Speaking of that. So, who read Red Room number one? With wow! My, uh, with, with my eyes closed between <laughs> wow. my wow, well, <laughs> then I I had to take a shower. So, but this is this has really made some big waves yeah. in the comic community. Um, so this is we're talking about Red Room number two from Fanagraphics, uh, continuing what should be about a thirteen part series by Ed Piscor, and man, what what do you say about this? That's not just horrifying. This one is focusing on the Poker Face organization, which was mentioned in the first one, uh, who was one of the most successful black market Red Room companies. Uh, and this is going to show uh, what great links they go to to uh, please their very sadistic fans and also how they avoid law enforcement, which it was kind of brought up in the first one, like this this team is so good, how do they not get caught? Mm -hmm. And so we're going to find out how. Uh, very mature. So mature that I'm not mature enough for it. <laughs> um, but we had a lot of people come into the store being like, I was seeing this pop up on my feed. What is this? Mm -hmm. And I, I mean, definitely one of the biggest thing Fanagraphics has ever done at oh, this yeah. point to hit such a mainstream thing. So I think this is going to be talked about for a long time and if you like number one uh definitely want to pick up number two because it seems like it's a lot more of the same which yeah. if you if you read it you know what the same is ed piscor is an amazing artist mm -hmm. i'll just yeah. put that right out there i am so glad that, you know because so many mediums that he could probably do that he's doing comics yep. i'm so glad he's doing comics 
so. He's like if EC Comics never stopped, but just got more gruesome and, and modernized themselves. Um, so yeah, when yeah. we, yeah. It's the very outlaw I, I, of the comic world. I thought I reviewed the book pretty well on a Tuesday show, but what you just said, I wish I had said that. that, <laughs> that, that that's perfect. Yeah. Modernized EC Comics, that's great. All right, so next up, Neil Gaiman and P. Craig Russell are doing a second part to their very popular North Mythology series. So this is North Mythology <laughs> Part 2, Number 1. You don't have to have read number or the first part because they're just retelling different legends mm -hmm. in their own way. And, I mean, who better to do that than Neil Gaiman? Mm -hmm. I mean, they probably tapped him to do that. They probably went over to his house and he was literally just reading old Norse mythology, <laughs> you know, writing notes. And they're like, hey, would you do a comic of what you're just doing at breakfast? Mm -hmm. He's like, ah, no problem. <laughs> so um, if you like the first one or if you missed it, you just don't know about it, you might want to know about this one. Just some cool stories told by uh, one of the master storytellers mm -hmm. himself. All right, so this is interesting. It is called Compass and it's going to be a five-part miniseries. Uh, this is described, okay, first of all, it's Greg Rucka is overseeing the creative team on this, which is really interesting. He's not actually writing anything himself, it seems like, but he's definitely acting as an advisor on this series. It was described as an Indiana Jones-esque adventure comic. So the creators were talking about how with a lot of pulp stuff, it doesn't have the energy um, of like Indiana Jones, mm -hmm. you know, of adventure tales and stuff, but that's, that's, so this is what this is, pulp mixed with high energy stuff, and our main character is going to find out the secret of eternal life, that is the uh, big prize at the end of the story here, so yeah, it, it is described as a teen book, so a little bit older, young adult series, but um, I think it's going to be good for everybody, it sounds really high energy and fun. Mm. Next up is one that I didn't know was coming out, and so I don't know the the most about Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Most of my um, time was spent learning the intricacies of Star Wars, but i fairly familiar, but what I thought was super cool about this, this is Buffy the Vampire Slayer Tea Time, number one, but this is actually like a graphic novel. It's $7.99. It's about Giles, and the creative team on it, it is written by Mirka Andolfo, with art by uh, Sia Ohm who, if you've read uh, Lola XOXO from, I believe, Aspen, uh, she is an incredible, incredible artist um, that, I mean, it's hard to describe. She does all her own coloring and everything. A very unique um, style in the comics world. And I thought this was super cool. So this is Giles, who we know is the, the occult expert, at the librarian at the high school, but what happens if he also turns vampire? So this is, I'm not sure if it's like a what if or just like a side story or whatever, but definitely for Buffy fans, but also if you're a fan of those creative teams, I mean, the cover is by Mirka and Dolfo alone, which is right. awesome. So you definitely want to check this out. He's being so refined, except that the blood is spilling down on his shirt. <laughs> And the pinky's not out, is it? Oh, no, that's how you know it's yep. a, little, a little rougher. <laughs> yep. Okay, so Jim Henson's The Storyteller. This is the fourth issue, fourth and final issue. We mainly just want to show this because this is a cover by Peach Momoko. For everybody who's a fan of hers out there, don't want you to miss it. She's now under contract at Marvel, so she probably did this back before that, I mm -hmm. assume. Or maybe there's clauses where she could finish up what she was working on. I think that's on. what it was, yeah. Um, so just don't want anyone to miss out on this cool looking peach momoko cover all right this is a super weird one and it knows it's weird this <laughs> is god killer tomorrow's ashes so this is actually a follow-up or a volume two i guess to the god killer series before which was described as saga meets johnny the homicidal maniac <laughs> um it's about a post nuke wasteland where what our main character is going to find a new heart for his sister so I don't usually just read the solicitations of things, but this was, it said that it is, okay, it is mind-bending, sometimes horrifying, always clever and devious tale of sci-fi, magic, apocalyptic sex, and subversive mind bombs. So there you go. That's, that cover is showing me that. So if you liked the first series, or if, it's definitely like super punk rock, crazy 
post-apocalyptic stuff and artwork, so. I hope whoever wrote that solicitation is the writer of that. <laughs> I know. You know like, they did a good job here. I, I hope that's not the marketing team. That's so crazy, that. Let's see what else they have to do in a, I, in a story. I love when they have the, like, it's like this meets this, when it's like, I don't see any connective tissue between the two things. Yeah. That's like, it's yeah. like Watchmen meets Toy Story. You're like, <laughs> I don't know, but there's something in the middle that sounds really interesting. Uh, the, the one connector here that you might care about, it's, it is from Matteo Pizzolo, who did Cal Exit. So if you like that, then there's, there's some connection for you. Next up is Wonder Girl number two. We just got Wonder Girl number one this week. Um, starting off the great journey of Yara Floor, who will one day, as we know, in Future State become the next Wonder Woman. But at this point, she's just Wonder Girl. And so far in the book, not even that yet. She has just went on a journey to Brazil um, to figure out some strange calling she has to go there. In this one, we... Uh, we find out she receives a sacred gift, which you can only imagine, you know, Wonder Woman's kind of sacred gift is her lasso, so Wonder Girls might be her magical weapon. And this catches the attention of Hera, the Greek god, who wants Yara Floor for her champion. So I think this is going to be really interesting now that Wonder Woman, as we know, is Diana Prince is kind of out of the picture on her journey, it looks like they're looking for the replacement also for who's going to be kind of Earth's champion, Wonder Woman. So if you picked up number one, you liked it. I mean, you can't say enough good things about the art. Uh, Joel Jones's art on that was yeah. incredible. Mm -hmm. It's, I mean, they could have released it without any words and just been an art book and it would have been worth the price. So if you liked it or if you still on the fence, definitely pick up number two because I feel like this is where the story is really going to get... You'll, you'll find out what the big story is going to be in this one. The first one is definitely an introduction issue. This one is going to be like, and here's what we're going to be doing for the it, next It looks like the fantasy is really coming into this Yeah, game. yeah, for sure. Yeah. And so we have a few variants for it. Um, this one was the, and I forgot to see which one this is. It's the Will Mirai cardstock variant. Okay, yeah. Not, so not the, a name I've heard a lot before. No, and this is, so this is like the B cover, mm -hmm. and then there is a, uh, one more cover that's the Pride Month variant by Kevin Wada. All right, so this is the B cover of Justice League number 63 by Dan Panosian. And in this issue, they say the trial of Naomi is kind of starting. But uh, the other thing that the solicitation said that I'm really interested in is the world finds out that Black Adam is on the Justice League. <laughs> like, it hits the news. And there's some blowback about that, obviously. And I think the Justice League is going to have to, you know, try to explain why that is. <laughs> So, but, I'm uh, sure all the Justice League's going to be looking at Superman, who led him on the team. It's like, okay, go ahead. You tell them, because <laughs> yep. we're still not sure. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, just don't want anyone to miss out on that. We like to show the, the variant colors. Yeah, this one's so, really cool, yep. too. All right, so if you are not reading it, Legends of the Dark Knight just released this past week, and this is issue number two, the Riley Ros Rossimo B cover. As you can see, we have some Riddler yeah. stuff right here. Uh, Batman is facing new villains. It's some interesting motives. And in this, he has to decide, he's faced with, will he let the Joker live or die? Is his predicament in this situation a good riddle for the Riddler? So it's a really good cover just on its own, but it's also the number two of that series. Next up is Batman Fortnite 0. number 6. So this we is got it. the <laughs> last uh, the issue, issue in the... Um, Batman Fortnite crossover. Uh, this week we just got the big Batman versus Snake Eyes issue. Um, you haven't read this issue yet, have you? I, I haven't. They gave us a preview. I think I've read up to issue four. Yeah. Um, I don't know if they've sent us a preview of five or six yet. I haven't checked this week. But. Yeah, so this one sounds really exciting because, um, for one thing, of course, we're, we're wrapping up the story. We have Batman and Catwoman who have found out how to get out of the loop um, where they constantly get get dropped back into uh, this fight. But 
to get out, they need Harley Quinn. And Harley Quinn may not be too quick to want to leave. I mean, this, this place is uh, made just for her. It's just a constant fight over and over. Um, but this says it's going to reveal some really big things about the Fortnite world as well and kind of who's behind this constant loop of this battle royale. So this is also when you get the final code, you'll be able to put in for your game and get the armored Batman suit, which I think everyone's really excited about. So you definitely do not want to miss the last issue. You know, and it started with Batman followed Harley in mm -hmm. to the storm. So they're finally getting back to her. Yeah. Right? She really hasn't been around. He's been meeting other people. So, all right. So this is, um, oh, oh yeah, the, the variant one. cover. Right. This is by, um, uh, the G cover, not the letter G, his last name is G.I., uh, who's an incredible artist. If you ever uh, watch some of his stuff, he just does all of this, like, freehand with no, like, preliminary sketches. Um, mm -hmm. Incredible artist. So, I really, all the variants have been doing this for this have been really cool, really creative. Yeah. So, this is Catwoman number 32, the Jenny Frizen variant, for those of you who, who can't just recognize right <laughs> off the bat. Just the, the coloring, the style, like, I, I think this is a pretty incredible variant that mm -hmm. I think is going to be very hot. We don't want anyone to miss out on. This issue also, they're exploring Catwoman's past. Mm -hmm. uh, not not like exactly her origin of what made her Catwoman. That's already been explored, but more, you know, she grew up sort of on the streets. You know, who was she when she was younger and, you know, what mm -hmm. forces were sort of at play back then. So... All right, next up is Nightwing 81. Nightwing has been so popular lately. We cannot keep it on the shelf. We order it more every week. Once again, Nightwing 81 cover B, the Raphael Grossetti variant. And I'll tell you more after we look at the next one here. This is the Travis Moore Pride Month cardstock variant. So what we have in this issue is uh, Nightwing is donning more of a detective role. It actually says in the solicitation that he gets rid of his sticks which have a name that the I... Scrimma sticks. Yes, Scrimma, yes. Uh, he gets rid of them and replaces them for a spy glass or a detective magnifying glass. It's gonna but hurt not, if you get hit obviously with it. not in this uh, cover. Yeah, it would hurt. But um, so anyway, he has to become more of a detective in this issue and he needs a new villain called Heartless. So definitely don't want to sleep on this issue and those are your two covers for it. Um, I think we might have gotten our covers mixed yeah, up. Yeah, that was the A cover. So, I thought that was a little Yeah, and that that's somebody's bad on the notes. It might even be my bad. So this is the Some A cover place. with Heartless okay, okay. on it. Um, the villain, he's had two cameos <laughs> in the previous issue. Uh, they say he's the man without a heart and he has a device that sucks people's hearts out. It's horrifying. Uh, yeah, so this pretty, is pretty cool <laughs> idea. So that's the A cover. The A cover. And then that would make this one the um, the more the Grissetti. The okay, Grissetti. Yeah. Okay. So then, do we have one more? Cover? And then this, pretty obviously. There we go. I was yeah. going to say, how was it? I was waiting for that one because that one's so just colorful. I love how bright it is. You never yeah. see Batman doing stuff in the daylight like that. Yeah. So here we go. Here's our Pride Month cover. I was yeah. curious about that. Yeah, we we got it ironed out. Next up is X Core number two. So the. Uh, the big book about the corporate side of the X-Men, uh, how they run their business operations from Krakoa now. And this is a tie-in with the gala, with the Hellfire Gala. So this follows kind of our, uh, the corporate leaders like Angel and uh, Monica, where they now have to hobnob in this party setting and... Of course, it's not going to go that easy. It's the X Men, so somebody's going to get going to get punched at some point. <laughs> but uh, want to make sure you knew about this because it is a tie-in with the Hellfire Gala. There's some great variants for this as well. Yeah, I added this cover. I thought this this cover just stood out to me. Yeah, I'm not like saying it. it's the best cover of my life, but I, it's just different. Yeah, it's it looks really like an ad for like some medicine or something. I I'm, <laughs> I am almost positive that's what they're going yeah. for. Yeah, you know, the two milligrams mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. yeah. So we have the Dodderman Connecting variant. So this one with Angel. The, the come at me bro stance he's doing. <laughs> or that. look at my pants. Yeah. <laughs> and then we have the Fochi character design variant. Yeah, which is a wraparound. Which is a wraparound. That's what shown it that way. And then next up we have New Mutants number 19, which is also a tie-in with the gala. 
we're, I mean, almost every X-Men book is tying in with it. And at this one, it says someone has van vanished at the party. So, uh, interesting. Yeah, we're getting Probably some, some interesting stuff. Killed. Maybe is a uh, member of New Mutants. And then we have the, the last one was the, uh, Dodderman variant. And then this one is the Lens character design variant. All right. So, this is not a variant. This is the A cover for Fantastic Four number 33, which is the second part of the Bride of Doom storyline. Dr. Doom's getting married, but there is trouble in paradise. Mm -hmm. uh, the last issue's still a little too close, so we yeah. can't really reveal what happened. But it's saucy. I'll tell you that. It's very saucy. <laughs> um, this Brooks A cover, fantastic. I'm a big fan of Mark Brooks. And, I mean, for obvious reasons. Yeah. Like, that's just great. And his style, it just stands out. Yeah. No one does... It does I mean, there's plenty of... Not plenty, but there are a lot of good artists out yeah. there. But none of them really resemble his style. So I love this also the cover because it's like Doom had to get the Fantastic Four to be like his the yeah. best men at his wedding. Yeah. It's one of those people who's like he, he's thinking about he's like I actually don't have, don't any, have friends. any friends. What's yeah. the next best thing? I I can always get a hold of Reed Richards. Closer <laughs> to your enemies than <laughs> yeah. you are anyone else, and you study them more. And please tell me that they're like they give a speech at the. At the, <laughs> the dinner. That's when just, I met this guy, he was trying to kill me. <laughs> and Literally. And, and he, he still, still is. is. And yeah. Doom's just like, yep. <laughs> Tries to blast him <laughs> as he's giving the speech. Oh, okay. Next we have, switching gears, Alien number four. This is the Lashley variant. Yeah, that's really cool. Too. I love it. It's, it's so often the alien is in the shadow so much. And mm -hmm. Ken Lash is like, no, nah, I'm just going to draw the whole alien. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And kind of a buff version of the alien at that. Yeah. Next up, we have Radiant Black. This is number five. This is the variant for that. And this is the end of the first story arc. It's hard to believe. It feels like the series just began. But the, uh, the last issue that just came out this week had a huge final final two-page uh, thing that happened, and we're going to really find out in this issue what is the ramifications of that. Is that big deal going to stick around, or is there some way around it? But uh, I, I think this has been an awesome series, and I'm excited to see how they wrap up the first big story arc. And then we have Radiant Black number four, the second printing, which yep. all of your second printings have been amazing covers. Mm -hmm. And this one, I mean, they went right back into the second print. They warned yep. everyone, order up on number four, yep. but shops don't listen. Yeah. You know, we listened. We got a lot of it. <laughs> but you know, we'll, we'll probably be getting some of this, too. Do you hear that, Kyle Higgins? We listen. Yep. We listen to you when you tell us these mm. things. Okay, this is Silver Coin number three, the Rod Hickrishen variant. I, I might have been hitting that name right or wrong. Here. <laughs> but try. You said it with a lot of confidence, so I just went with it. Yeah. So, uh, Silver Coin number three, this is the variant. It has been announced that it is now no longer a limited series. It was going to be a five issue limited series. It's for an anthology written by different people. This is now an ongoing series. So, uh, I don't know if you guys have heard that. We like to give you news, we like to tell you little insider things or things that we've just read. Um, but if you have Silver Coin number one, the value on that might go up now. Yeah. So I think that's really cool. I like horror. I like horror anthology. So wow, it's ongoing. Great. Now it's not just Ice Cream Man that I have to pick up. I gotta pick this one up too. I know this cover looks like a Hellraiser Cenobite or something. Yeah, it's yeah. very, very and creepy. Scary. This is written by Chip Zdarsky, who wrote the first issue as well. So I don't know if he's gonna become like their go-to showrunner yeah. or not. Uh, that hasn't really been established. But anyway, just wanted to let you know about that. All right, this is Time Before Time. This is number two, the C cover. If you read number one, which came out this past week, it is about uh, if you, you, can, you are able to go back in time and live a better life if you have the right money to do so. So this is the number two. Next up, this is Ultra Mega number four. And uh, I was just reading online that this is the first appearance of a new Ultra Mega, which seems... Really cool because the new Ultra Mega goes up against the Kaiju King. So it sounds like a big fight issue. And this is the Pride Month variant. All right. So Silver City number two is available for order. I don't know how many people read number one. Pretty cool first I really issue. Liked it. Yeah. And this one, they're not jamming like a thousand variants down your throat mm -hmm. or anything. But I mean, look at the covers. Yeah. That's a, that's a really good cover. 
Uh, interior art's also really good. So our main character, her name, she goes by Rue, R-E-U. Rue learns the details about her horrific death. Because when she appeared in the Silver City, which is where you go after you die, um, she was didn't quite know yeah. what happened to her. So this issue, she's going to find that out. So that sounds like... Yeah, really it, was, it was really a really scary event that we saw in the first one. So, all right, all right, more Geiger. This is Geiger number one, fourth printing, and then Geiger number two, second printing. So there they are. Wondering how high is this one going to go? How high can she go? Yep, a lot more popular than initially thought, and we thought it'd be good, but yeah, yeah. it's just yeah, people keep hearing about it and running to get it. Mm -hmm. So a lot of great indie books yeah. right now. More than I mean, we've been open for almost six years, and I think more good indie books right now than when we started. We've for been sure. open yeah. for six and a half years. <laughs> what? Pretty sure. Uh, okay, we'll we'll figure that out later. <laughs> Next up is The Good Asian, number one, second print. So uh, it just came out a few weeks ago. Uh, crime, noir, Chinatown story that is uh, popular enough, like most of the books now, going for another printing. Yeah. I don't think anyone knew what to make of it. Um, you know, like mm -hmm. I said, there's a lot in that title. And the preview, a lot of times stores don't read the previews. Yeah. We read the previews, so, you know, and, and now it's been getting a lot of word of mouth. In fact, people have been saying um, award-winning when they yeah. talk about the first issue. So I, I don't know, you know, if, if that's going to be the case. But I think that's what drove this back to yeah. second print. So, All right, so another one going to second print. And, you know, these haven't gone to second print in a while. Uh, Ice Cream Man number 24. So I, I don't know why, but they're doing a second printing of it, the the telethon issue. You know, good good like all the rest. But if you want to collect all that ice cream man and you want to get the ones that might end up extra rare, here is your notice on that. Speaking of second prints, it's time before time again. Did we just time travel? Because <laughs> this is number one, the second printing of time before time. Next up is Berserker number two, third print. This is the uh, Raphael Grandpa variant printing. Um, this is another one I, I feel like it's not even worth like guessing how many printings it's <laughs> going to go to. I mean, it, just from here for the rest of the time, there's going to be printings of Berserker. Yeah, I, I wonder if there's probably a store exclusive that already did this, but how long until they do a cover where it's like homage to the sad Keanu on the <laughs> on the bench? Oh, oh yeah, man, you, you just, know. Yeah. But there'll be there'll be like some soldiers' heads that he ripped <laughs> off and viscera. That would be great. Yeah, I, I some stores probably already done that. Okay, so this is Future State Wonder Woman the trade paperback. This is gonna cost nineteen ninety nine. This is all of the future state stuff that had to do with all the various Wonder Women. So, meaning uh, Nubia's in it, it's her stuff. Um, she had a lot of B stories mm -hmm. and a lot of different future state things. It's all the Yara Floor stuff, it's all the Diana Prince stuff. I think they're doing this because, I mean, there's so much of the future state Wonder Woman tied up in where she's gone, mm -hmm. and particularly all the Yara Floor stuff now that Wonder Girl has started. So, if you're digging Wonder Girl and you want to. You know, you don't want to miss all mm -hmm. the stuff that happened in Future State. This is a really easy way to get it all or to read it all together. So, All right. Who is excited for Loki to come out on Disney Plus? It's coming out in just a couple weeks. Yep. So get ready for more with Loki Agent of Asgard, the complete collection. Trade paperback. This is $40. It collects Loki Agent of Asgard from 2014, the complete 1 through 17 series. And Original Sin, a couple issues in that, and then Marvel Point One. So lots of stuff for 40 bucks, just in time for the series to drop. And then we also have, this looks super fun, uh, Loki Mistriff, Mistress. Mis midriff of <laughs> Madness. <laughs> Loki <laughs> Mistress Mischief. And this is, of course, when uh, the Asgardian cycle of life began again after Ragnarok. Loki returns as a woman, and it is heavily rumored that we will see a Loki, female Loki, in the Disney Plus show. Yeah, people were like, when they saw this was rushed back to print, mm -hmm. or a new collection of it, just in time for the Loki show, people were like, oh, yeah, I kind of see what you're doing there. And um, 
if, yeah. if, you, if you think you might be interested in this stuff, um, if you've liked all the other um, uh, Disney Plus Marvel shows, they don't make limitless am amounts of yeah. these. Like, no. people come in after the show drops, we sell the dozen or so we order, and then we're always surprised how hard it is to get these back in yeah, stock. Yeah, it was yeah. super hard to get the WandaVision The WandaVision stuff. stuff was, I mean, it, it was a real shame that there, there wasn't a big push right before to get some of those trades out yeah. because people came kept coming in and be like, do you have the, the graphic novel that the show's based on? And it's yeah. like, one that doesn't exist, but also, no, we don't have anything with those characters in yeah, it now. So, so once again, ask your local store yes. that guarantees your copy of these things. This show is all about thinking ahead. That's what Comics <laughs> from the Future is all about. Next up is Taskmaster uh, Rubicon Trigger. Uh, this collects the Taskmaster series, the one through five, that I feel like this came out in anticipation of Black Widow. Right, it definitely did. And that didn't happen. So now the trade is coming out right before the movie drops. So... If you're interested in that character that's going to be appearing in the movie, I felt like this was a good introduction to the character and kind of his power set and all of that. Yeah, this was a good series. It had a lot of surprises. Mm -hmm. It had some first appearances that people are still sort of chasing after. Um, so it, it's a good read. And Taskmaster, I believe this is the only series he's ever headlined. I don't yeah. think he's ever had his own miniseries. So. And it's uh, I think it's fifteen ninety nine. Mm. So check this out. Marvel is doing a new Treasury edition. Oh, wow. Yeah. I, I was really shocked. Dusting to, to that, that off the uh, banner I, they have. I know. I know. So, you know, the last Treasuries I remember is, I know Image did like a Treasury edition for Walking Dead. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's been Treasury edition of Rick and Morty. Mm -hmm. um, but Marvel, so I, it's hard to tell because, you know, it's just the same looking size. But this is Wolverine, Black, White, and Blood, one through four, which is the full series. In Treasury Edition, they're so happy with the art for it. They want you to see it in in that size. So you know, new. I, I bet this is going to be the first of many. Mm -hmm. I think that they're like, hey, you know, why not? People the like Carnage these. will probably get this because yeah. those are very art centric series. Yep. So this is twenty nine ninety nine, which I think is a pretty good price. How big they are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you're a fan of that art or of Treasuries. I don't imagine stores are going to order a ton of these. So mm -hmm. this is another one I urge. Ask your store. Yeah. Because it takes up a lot of space. And people don't realize that. The bigger the book, the more space it takes up. And if your stores run well like we are, we're efficient with that. If something is really big, we're like, uh, do we want a lot of these in our back issues that are taking up <laughs> space in boxes? We don't have that size. Yeah. So please let us know. Next up is Star Wars Insider. This is issue 203. We've had a lot of people just recently. Um, Jumping on. Because of all the High Republic stuff, because of Mandalorian, because of all the uh, new shows that are going to be coming out. Uh, we want to show Star Wars Insider off now as something that a lot of people are really wanting now. And it's still really, really good. A lot of like original stories in it. Great articles that I know now people are like, oh, every article you can read online. But they Star Wars Insider does a good job at doing stuff that is not something that's easily found or interviews that are very exclusive to them. Um, so this is the, I guess, this is the A cover or right. the, the, the newsstand This cover. is a version you'll find just sort of anywhere that mm -hmm. can carry it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But then, I mean, this is yeah. amazing. This is, I already know people who are watching this right now <laughs> that are telling me mentally, I, I get you, Davis, I hear you, uh, <laughs> that... Uh, this is the FOC cover. So this is only, you can only get it through specialty shops like comic book stores and stuff. And really awesome Ahsoka variant. They don't release those covers until like, they give us such a short window yeah. to order them too. Mm -hmm. That's why, you know, final order cutoff. They don't have to have that done until today, Friday at noon. Mm -hmm. And the order has to be in by Monday. Yeah. So yeah, that's, and they typically don't have these ready till today. Yeah, so. so amazing, amazing Ahsoka cover. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, <laughs> I mean, I feel like, I think every cover for the past, like, I don't know how many have had at least Grogu on the cover, if not Mando and Grogu. And so this is the previews exclusive cover. That's a heart-melting cover, mm -hmm. though. I mean, you know, if, if you, you don't know, that... know anything, you might as well just join up with the Grinch. 
I mean, that scene too, that's from the last episode of season two. Yeah. And that's a real, a real tearjerker right there. But uh, once again, this is one that your Barnes and Nobles, your Books and Millions, uh, all those mm-hmm. don't get these nope. covers. These are specialty shop yep. covers. So this is just for us. The previews edition. So when you're ordering it, be specific. Say I want the FOC cover, the previews cover, or the new stand, or all three. And I, I mean, they're knocking it out of the park now. I feel like Star Wars Insider is, you know, I remember reading it back during the prequels when they were doing all the exclusives for that. But I think this, it's now just as big as it was back in its heyday initially. So. Yep, they're all nine ninety nine, and there's a lot in them. Yeah, yeah, so. very worth it. All, all right. right. That That'll is do it. it for us yep. today. That'll do it. <laughs> I was trying to synchronize and didn't work. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching our video today, and hopefully you found out about some things you weren't sure of or didn't know existed until now. We appreciate every single one of you who watches or comments or even just gives us a like. And thank you so much for also those of you who have subscribed to our channel as well. Yep, keep the subscriptions coming. If you've been lurking, wondering, will I like this? Are they going to, you know, just stop doing them? No, we have a lot of shows under our belt now. Um, we have more planned for the future. So hit subscribe. Tell your friends. Let's push us past 900. We want to get to 1,000. We've we'll we got something some really special. We've got like really we cool ideas. If you know, had noticed just recently we have our new intro. That's We've right. got more cool stuff like that coming. It's just going to jazz up the place. <laughs> we need to get that one guy who writes all those, uh, you know, super hyperbolic, <laughs> uh, intense descriptions for what's going to happen at 1,000 subscribers. Maybe I'll change that Spider-Man up there to be something else <laughs> or that Batman over there that's definitely really right there in this really cool room we have. <laughs> the giant banner of our logo. Yep. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have an awesome weekend. Make sure to get your orders in by Sunday for most shops um, and for DC items. And you can get your orders to us by Monday um, by 5 p.m. And we'll leave some info up on the screen of how you can do that. Yep. Until next time.